Hello and welcome to Football United TV. I'm your host Matt King and I'm here with Joe, Spurs fan. Hello Matt. Thanks for me. Very good Matt, thanks for having me on. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot to do that. Like, I'm going to have to get used to doing that now. <laughs> no worries. Right. Thanks for having me on, it's a pleasure to be here. Nah, it's alright mate. So, um, of course, we're going to talk about Spurs because you're a big Spurs fan. Yeah. Um, what did you make of the semi-final against Ajax? And your reaction? <sighs> um, it, it was incredible. Um, to be honest with you, even now at this late stage, a couple of days before the final, it hasn't actually fully sunk in what we have achieved. Um, Pochettino has described this as a miracle, a miracle that we've even gotten this far. Uh, so much so that he said he might even go home if we win the Champions League because you could never surpass that as a Spurs manager. Um, so it is, yeah, yeah, he said that in the interview after the game. He said, if I, if I win the Champions League, I'll go home. And I think gets lost in translation a bit. I don't think that was him basically signing his P45 and saying I'm off. I just think what he means is that the circumstances of our team, with our budget, with our injuries, our suspensions we've had in leading up to this point, the fact that we haven't, you know, that Daniel Levy, of course, is not spending the money that the other clubs are spending, the clubs above us in the Premier League. I think it's, uh, he just says that it would really be unimaginable that he could surpass that achievement. Um, so yeah, that game was just incredible. and. Um, you know, I didn't even celebrate that hard when Mora scored the winning goal because I was still, I was in such a state of shock. Because most Spurs fans, seasoned Spurs fans, will tell you that stuff like this doesn't happen to us. Yeah. So it's impossible to know how to react. It was like the, you know, Jermaine Janus, he was doing the commentary, wasn't yeah. he, I, I believe, and he was just yeah. all pulled up, he was like a bit teary, you know, yeah. he was like, I can't even speak yeah. right now. And, you know, he's paid <clears> to speak, <throat> and he couldn't even do that. I yeah. mean, I think that that kind of shows you <laughs> that the level we were at. that was, it, yeah. It's so emotional for everybody. I mean, I'm not a Tottenham fan, but I was definitely like, oh my, I can't, I wasn't here actually watching it, mm. I, I couldn't believe yeah. what had happened. Yeah. And especially with the game beforehand, uh, the... Liverpool and Barcelona, oh, talking about you know trying to compare and beat that, yeah, and, and they did. Yeah, I think so. I think it definitely was. You know, you had 45 minutes left. Well, you've hit the nail on the head. It's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, three goals down. Yeah, I mean they had they had 90 minutes and a 12th man. I mean, I'm not saying that that means that that achievement should be looked. You know, should and be the away goal right as well. Yeah. So that yeah. was like, okay, and they've got the away goal, so we've got to get another one. I had the away goal. I mean, what Liverpool achieved was incredible. I mean, I think when you when you look at the team that they were playing, uh, a team full of people that have been there and done it, you know, the likes of Lionel Messi, a player who can win games on his own. So I think that what they achieved was incredible, but I think that the odds against us were, were seemingly insurmountable against a team that looked so, so, with so much conviction <clears throat> in their play, so casual, so relaxed, and understanding of their philosophy uh, and everything that makes Spurs a great side, our philosophy, seemed to be missing at, at, at least in yeah. the first game and the first half of the second leg. Uh, just uh, absolutely yeah, bamboozled by, by, by what went on and as I say it took me a long time to actually come back down to earth and now obviously we've got, we've got a final uh, against Liverpool. Yeah, what do you make of that, you know, seeing as Liverpool their team at the moment, yeah, um, probably one of the best in the world, right? I mean, yeah. I, know, I know like Man City obviously are, are, in my opinion, a little bit better than Liverpool yeah. because they won the Premier League, obviously, sure. and they've won a few more cups this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, what do you make of the chances of Spurs actually going to this final and actually bagging the Champions and actually winning it? Well, I mean, the thing with uh, <clears throat> with Liverpool is, I mean, you know, you see the stats. Uh, in any other league in top level football uh, this season, Liverpool would have won that league, you know, with the amount of points that they gathered. They are an incredibly intimidating team. I mean, it's the thing with, with all managers, like Pochettino in this case, what they do before games is they, they look at the, the um, strengths and weaknesses in their opposition. I don't actually believe that Liverpool have any weaknesses. So I yeah, think. No, I agree with you on that. Yeah, <clears throat> so I think that you're basically down to who's going to have the balls on the night. Uh, I think that it is, uh, I mean Liverpool are strong favourites because this is their second Champions League final in a row. Uh, a lot of players have, you know, they've done the trip to the foreign country, they've been on the coach, you know, the, the, the unfamiliar atmosphere, the pressure. Uh, and to be honest with you, if it wasn't for Lorius Carius, um, Liverpool were, you know, it was 1-1 in the game against Madrid last season until the goalkeeper made a couple of... Two fumbles. Yeah, you know. I mean, we'll, we'll 
give Bale that amazing oh. Um, oh, overhead yeah. kick. Yeah, yeah, the greatest, the greatest fumble in there. I don't think any yeah. keeper would have got that. I mean, but that's the greatest two... uh, goal I've seen <clears throat> in the Champions League final from Gareth Bale. Yeah, agree. I'd yeah. say, and it's. Uh, do you know what? My other one is another um, Real Madrid goal. Uh, Zinedine Zidane. Zidane. Yeah. I mean, I I, I <clears throat> didn't watch that particular game no, live. No, no, Obviously, no, I've no. seen the goal replay yeah, yeah, a yeah, million yeah. times. So, kind of back to your question, you said, yeah. "Do I think <clears throat> that we could win?" Yeah. Now, <clears throat> of course, I think we could win. Whether I think we will win is a different thing. I'm not sure that we can. Um, I think that, as I said, Liverpool have been in this situation before. They will want kind of, not vengeance, because obviously we didn't have anything to do with it, but they'll want kind of to put to exercise the demons of last year and actually go, get over the line this time. This is Jurgen Klopp's third um, Champions League final and they say, you know, best out of three, don't they? Or not, be, you know, but, you know yeah. third time lucky, yeah, sorry, yeah, not best out, yeah, third time yeah, yeah. lucky. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we've never been in this situation before. Uh, I personally think that um, we've had an incredible amount of luck in this uh, competition. I mean, if you actually go back and look over it, I mean, we qualified from our group by drawing with Barcelona, but we still needed PSV to get a result against Inter Milan. So if PSV, um, if Inter Milan had beaten PSV, whatever we did in the new Camp would have been rendered irrelevant. So we needed luck there. In the uh, Man City game, we got uh, uh, a tremendous amount of luck with the fact that Ericsson, yeah, yeah. yeah basically <laughs> passed the ball uh, to you know into Aguero, uh, which led to their goal, which was then disallowed. Um, another unbelievable moment, I can't believe. And I just like, I feel like sooner or later your luck runs out, and I just wonder whether this, the fact that we've gotten to a final, is this as far as we can go now? Is it really believable that this Tottenham team could beat this Liverpool team? And I know we pushed them close, you know, we played them twice in the league this season, we lost 2-1 both times, so by no means we were embarrassed by them. Um, I do think that it is possible to get under their skin. I remember in the second half of the Anfield game, uh, you know, a few months back, um, you, know, you know, if Suzoko scores that chance he has, um, then, you know, it's, we, we'd be leading 2-1 and we might have seen that game out and we could have basically handed the title to Manchester City. In the end, they got a huge amount of luck with, you know, with an own goal, which led to their victory. I know people, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not, you know, Virgil van Dijk is, is one of the best, uh, you know, centre-halves in the world. Amazing. Yeah, incredible <laughs> player. But at the same time, I do think that whoever was defending in that situation, Suzoko was always putting that ball in Rosa. Mm. He's not a striker. I personally yeah. think, if that had been, because I remember watching that song, was just a square of um, Suzoko and Van Dyke was basically blocking any kind of pass. I feel like if, if it was Deli Alley on the ball, someone with his kind of slick, quick thinking and timing, he might have been able to play Son in and Son finishes that chance, not Suzoko. So the only reason I bring this up is I thought I'm, I'm basically desperately trying to look for any kind of faith that we could actually pull off this result. Thinking about the faith thing and talk, you were talking about like the, the luck of getting through and that. Hmm. Um, the equaliser uh, against Barcelona was scored by the one and only. It's more, it's more. Yeah. He seems to be the saviour at the moment at Tottenham, doesn't he? Yeah. Bagging the first ever hat trick at the new ground yeah. and bagging a hat trick against Ajax as well. Yeah. I well, mean, Lucas Moura. Do you think he'll start as well? Might add that into the question. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think he has to start. I think that Harry Kane. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, if you have Harry Kane and he's available to play, play him because he's a world beater. Agreed with the fact that he's a world beater. Yeah, I think yeah. that being fit and being match fit are two completely different things. Yeah. He hasn't played a game in since the first leg uh, at the top of Hotspur ground against Man City. Um, so he hasn't played since then. I think it would be, in any other game, you look at that and say it's ridiculous to think that a player could come back from a broken angle and actually start that next game. Anytime anyone comes back from injuries, they always start on the bench. It's just the way it works. And also when you say about Mora, I think it's a bit um, kind of out of order to Lucas Mora to say that just because Harry Kane, you know, bad, is able yeah. to run, that he should take your position. I mean, he's that's what I thought. I thought that that might be the case that Harry Kane would take that spot. And I don't know what you think, but I think when Kane got the injury originally, they were quite worried about like what was going to happen putting Lorente in. Yeah. Um, and, and they probably will drop points. And of, of course, they did at the end. Yeah. But didn't do too badly though, did they? With no. Lucas putting Lucas Moura in. I'm a, definitely a, fa a favourable fan of Lucas Moura. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So. I mean, Lucas Moura has been like a new signing for us this season, really, because even though he was the last player to sign, and um, you know, last year, and he he was a kind of fringe player, came in a couple of sort of substitute appearances, played a bit in the domestic cups, but he wasn't a first team player. Uh, he's obviously 
had to do that because of the, the injuries and suspensions that we've had. And he's really stepped up to the plate. I mean, when we signed him, Pochettino said, you know, for 25 million, or I think it was, he said it was it was too good an offer not to take, even if he didn't necessarily have a first team place ready for him. It's just you cannot not buy a player that good, you know, when he's going at a very reasonable price. And he's really stepped up to the plate. I know that the guy has a lot of belief. I know he's deeply religious as well. He seems to have this thing that, uh, you know, that the gods are basically looking down on him and saying, yeah, this is this is your moment and everything, you know. Um, and I think that, you know, stuff like that, it actually, you know, works kind of in our favour. I think that, that, you know, if he finds that self-belief in some way, even spiritually, for him, um, then, then great, you know, it, it just kind of turns him in his mind into a kind of, almost be like figure, I hope, because the club did it, did it against Barcelona and obviously did it against Ajax. Well, yeah, he said it was the best, uh, the best moment of his career. Yeah. He said life at first, and then he had to sort of... Yeah, yeah. Because well, he's got kids. He's got kids, yeah, I was just well. thinking, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't want to get in trouble, do you? No, 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 what the goal meant uh, for, for not just for him but for for the football club. You know, that, what I have to kind of reiterate again about Tottenham is that this is a huge honour for us to be in this situation. The thing with, uh, with with our football club is that we don't expect to be in these finals. You know, just being there. I, I know they say you know, no one remembers the runner up, um, and. You know, possibly right, but I think it, it is a huge honour for us to have gotten this far. And the fact that he was the one that put us there um, is massive. I mean, it's kind of like when you ask, you know, about what your, you think the chances are for winning this game. I kind of think that for me, it's it's kind of similar to those adverts you see for the postcode lottery on TV, <laughs> where someone shows up at your door and says, "Oh, well done, you've worked the Rose yeah, Welsh yeah, for some yeah, reason. Yeah. You've won the postcode lottery," and they yeah. hand a <laughs> check. And the people always take it and they say stuff like, "This never happens to me." I've never won anything in my life. This is amazing. If we were to win the Champions League, it's not just winning a game of football. For me, it, it changes my life because you've never expect to be in that situation. It is like winning, you know, <clears throat> Tottenham Hotspur is a huge part of my life. I've supported them from, for a very long time. So if you're actually able to win something like yeah, that, something yeah. you never thought <clears throat> you would win, it's something that you always remember. I mean, we would, we would dine out on that for, for years and years to come because. There are teams that dominate domestically, and obviously as a United fan, you've seen your team dominate domestically for many years. Uh, Manchester City have just retained the title, so they may go on and dominate for years to come, probably provided they keep certain players and of course their manager. Um, Chelsea obviously had a, had a lot of good seasons, you know, winning, not winning, winning, not winning. So you can sort of create a bit of a legacy domestically, but Champions League is very, very different. Champions League is something that can, for some clubs, not just players, not just managers, but for some clubs as a whole, they could only ever get there once. I mean, there's a chance that we could win the Champions League, and then our club is, for whatever reason, is dismantled, goes into administration, whatever, or the Champions League ceases to be a thing anymore because they swap it for Super League or something, whatever else they've got their eyes on. And then it's like, well, we had our chance to win it, we didn't, and we never can now. You know, so if you have the chance to win a Champions League, it is a life-changing thing. There are some people that Tottenham Hotspur is their whole life. Yeah. Can I just say as well, talking about that, yeah. Uh, not it will be it will change your life because it would be bragging rights, wouldn't it, against Arsenal as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think Arsenal are really gutted about the fact that Tottenham are in a final of the Champions League and they could potentially win it with the team as well. Yeah, <clears throat> potentially. I mean, I'm yeah. bragging rights. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. The bragging rights would <laughs> bragging rights would of course be you great. and Chelsea yeah. and Arsenal have them. Exactly. I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I think no, you invincibles are, apparently. Yeah, you are right, and I think that. Um, Obviously, bragging rights is good. Uh, it's great to have something over your local rivals. Um, I think that the, the thing with it being the Champions League as well is it's the thing that they can't say, well, fine, but we won that. You know what I mean? Like, if, if we were to win... I remember hearing on stuff like Sunday Supplement and stuff that they've, Sky Sports loves talking about Pochettino and Spurs and I watch all that and they always talk about this concept of having a different stick to beat Pochettino with. so they would say you got this constant question comes up has Pochettino <coughs> taken yeah, Spurs as yeah. far as they can go uh, so and, and then one journalist said well even if he won like the League Cup they'd say yeah but he hasn't won the FA Cup if he win the FA Cup he says yeah but he hasn't won the Premier League they keep coming back the Champions League is such a elite competition and it's something that you know so few teams you know, will ever get their hands on. To have something that our local rivals have never had, and let's be honest, 
you know, they're not looking anywhere close to it in the current state of their club. It would be it would be incredible. If, you know, champions of Europe, you'll never see that. I mean, that's a charm. And to be honest with you, had they won the Europa League, that would have sports it definitely because they could have <clears> said, well, we're kind of European champions, but just in a just smaller in a trophy. Smaller, yeah. yeah, so the fact that Chelsea kind of helped us out with that one. Yeah, but I didn't actually, we haven't actually updated that. Was... So, win or lose, what do you think this is for Tottenham's future? What do you think it holds? <clears throat> right, well, I mean, I think that when, I think of when Chelsea won the Champions League back in 2012, I think it was. I remember Eden Hazard, uh, they signed him in that, the summer afterwards and he said, um, you know, seeing Chelsea win the Champions League was a lot to do with my reason for coming to the club. Now, of course, you know, you look at, you know, a, a club raises their profile when they win the Champions League. Pochettino talks a lot about that, about in order for Tottenham to go to the next level, winning an FA Cup or a League Cup would be nice, but it's the Champions League or Premier League. I think that the fact that Chelsea were, you know, multiple title winners and they could afford to pay him a lot of wages probably had a lot to do with that decision as well. Um, I think that even if we were to win the Champions League, I'm not sure that that would necessarily go a huge way to us signing the best players in the world. I mean, I still think you've got City, Liverpool, Barcelona, Real Madrid, PSG, teams that are consistently going to be in the Champions League and are going to be able to pay ridiculous wages. Plus, the players that are coming in, they're not going to be sharing any of the success of that win. They're going to be coming on for what's next. So, win or lose, I think the fact that we've already qualified for next season's uh, Champions League by finishing fourth, that's going to be the thing that really goes a long way to uh, how we progress as a club. I mean, the fact that Chelsea beat Arsenal in the Europa League did us a, a huge favour in, in the fact that Chelsea had already got their place confirmed next yeah. season. Um, they uh, possibly have a transfer embargo. They might not be able to sign anyone for a couple of seasons, potentially, so that helps us out. Arsenal are not in the Champions League next season, therefore there might be certain players that might have been tempted to go there and maybe now we could acquire instead. Sorry to say, but same with yourselves, you know, United not being in the... You know. So I look at the, the different variables that make our rivals weaker and us stronger, and I think that us winning the Champions League would be great for our fans, but in terms of how we progress, I'm not sure that's going to be the thing that tilts it. I think it's going to be continued success. It's going to be the promise of the, you know, like promising the promised land. You know, we've got a fantastic new stadium. We've got a great training ground. Best in stadium London. in the world. <clears throat> you've been, yeah. You've been to I have visit not it? been. I, I've, I've been watched in. many a video, many yeah, a vlog. Yeah. Just wanted to see what it looked yeah. like. And it, it, yeah. yeah, it's inviting. I, def I just want to go. I yeah. I just looking for a game. I just want to go and hang out there. Yeah. I mean, I think that. Um, Don't hold me. <laughs> United fans, don't don't pin me up. No, you'll be alright. Um, I mean, I think a lot mm. of fans have said, whoever you support, that it's a stadium they look forward to visiting. Um, I've been lucky enough to go a couple of times now. I, I, I went to the Legends Test event and I went to the Brighton game, the, the last home game that we, that we won. And um, it, it was fantastic. I mean, I think that all stadiums have the potential to be kind of really boisterous or kind of quiet. I mean, I think West Ham came and beat us 1-0 and proved that, you know, you can You need binoculars win. for... for uh... <laughs> <laughs> you need binoculars to go to their stadium, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that the big nights... I mean, <clears throat> any stadium has the capacity to, to really create an atmosphere if it's a big game. I mean, you look at the Emirates, everyone says about the Emirates is, is like a library, but when whenever we go there, it's a really, really, you know, kind of hostile, intimidating stadium. And I think that... I think, I mean, if our fans could create the atmosphere of a North London derby for, you know you know, uh, Aston Villa at home or something, then we could potentially be league challenging next year. Uh, I mean, Anfield nights on Champions League nights, they always talk about the 12th man. The stadium is built for football. That's the one thing I will say. It is built for football. It's nice and close. It's tight to the pitch. It feels very much still like White Hart Lane when you walk in. You don't feel like you've moved, you know, miles and miles yeah. down the road, which of course we haven't. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's always a possibility for us to win or another team to win. It's about the fans turning up. The stadium looks beautiful, but you need that kind of ultras yeah. atmosphere, mm -hmm. I think, regardless of what stadium. But I, I think it will. I think it will make and it will help, especially getting in the Champions League final and the way yeah. we've been playing for the last four or five years, yeah. making Champions League. Yeah. That, that's incredible, I think. It's, yeah. You look at what Tottenham was uh, like 10 years ago. Yeah. You never would have put your money on no. what's happening right now. No, I mean, the thing is, 10 years ago, we would probably be like what West Ham are now. You know, that team that kind of think that they're something bigger than what they, they really are. It's 10 years since you won a cup as well, right? Yeah, no, it was yeah, the League 2007, Cup. 2007 8, what? Uh, League Two, 2008 League Cup. Uh, a lot of people say that that's not even a trophy. So, uh, I mean, it is staggering. 
counts. Counts. Yeah, yeah, it all counts. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, according to Jose Mourinho, the Community Shield counts. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, uh, well, apparently, yeah. The, the Premier League count it as something. The FA, sorry, count it as a natural major. It's like I don't. No, 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 no fan in the world does. No. But they call it as. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. Yeah, you, Jose Mourinho. He would say that. Though, yeah. No, of course he played his record and everything. I mean, I think that any any trophy is worth lifting. I mean. One other thing I want to say just about before we finish about the future yeah. of our club is that um, there is the, the possibility that winning this Champions League trophy, you think to yourself, oh, it's, it's the greatest achievement and now we push on from here. And Pochettino has already kind of made these cutting comments about, oh, if, we, if I could pull off the miracle of giving this team the Champions League, you know, with all of the odds we've been up against, the teams that we've had to face and the teams that are better than us in our domestic league, if I could actually pull it off with our budget and everything, I would go home. There is a possibility, and that sounds a bit gloomy, but winning this Champions League could actually be a kind of a full stop on the Pochettino story. He might decide that he's had a taste of success and now he wants to go somewhere with a bigger budget where maybe he could have consistent success. Our players might think the same thing. But the one thing I will say is that what we've achieved with the, you know, the limitations we've had compared to others, if this was the end of the story and we walked away with the Champions League, but without Pochettino, without Ericsson, Deli Alley, you know, others that might have thought, I've tasted a bit, I want a bit more. Um, it's still something that we can hold on to for a very, very long time, and it's something that you tell your grandkids about, that in 2019, we actually, against all odds, won the Champions League. Um, do I think we will? Um, personally, no. I think Liverpool are too strong. I just uh, <coughs> hope that it's, it's not an embarrassment that we turn up and we're really up for it, and, we give them a really, really good game and make them kind of scrape to go over the line. Yeah. Um, so to wrap it up pretty much, I'd like to ask you your match prediction, the result. What do you um, think the score's going to be? I think the three weeks off before the game has uh, has favoured us in the sense that we've had time to get players in. I think that both teams have had a period where they're not playing. So in terms of match fitness, this this could go either way in terms of uh, you know the legs and everything. Um, but I think that it'll be a tight game, but I expect Liverpool to win in 90 minutes. I'll say 2-1 Liverpool. Um, but if I could be sitting here in a couple of weeks with you and saying it was 2-1 Spurs, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be here. I'd probably have been sucked up to heaven by then. Maybe. <laughs> You'll, you'll be out in Madrid, like just still parading it around. I don't know what I'll do. I might even have a nervous breakdown if we win. No idea. <laughs> Padded cell. <laughs> yeah, it might. No, no, but everybody might, you know, like just faint and pass out and like. Yeah. Could be good. I certainly would. <laughs> would you, you think you would? You think you would? I think I might faint. I'll definitely cry. You think? Yeah, you would cry. Yeah. Oh, that's no, that's how emotion. See, that's the emotion. Of football. You yeah. See. Only football can do that. <clears throat> Well, please get a vlog of that. I want you to. <laughs> if you pass right. out, like, make sure somebody else is filming because yeah, yeah it'll just die out. I'll keep you guys posted. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Joe, for um, joining us today. No worries. Cheers, man. Thanks and for all me. the best to Spurs, all the best to Liverpool. Unfortunate for Arsenal yesterday. 4 1 Chelsea. Yep. Never mind. This is Spurs time. I think it is. I think it is. But, you know, I've got a few Liverpool fans, so if they win, I'll be congratulating. I'm a Man United fan, so it's. It's very, very humble of you. But yeah, thank you very much, and please press that subscribe button, share, like, do what you can, and yeah, keep tuned. Bye bye.